Right. Oh, that's pretty cool. And pretty cool. I can't record over here now. It, you're in control. Oh, you're no. the boss. Uh, but before we get started, this class today is uh, it's titled the Easy Series Product Tips. And then we said we encourage um, uh, SD owners. And the reason is, is because there is a lot of similarities in the setup. Uh, even though we're going to be spotlighting the easy series now. I'm not the, this is just here just in case I need to jump in at some point Sean is going to be doing a majority of the class. I'm just here as a uh, a Backup and if there's something related to these instruments um, But what I also want to tell you so if this is an easy series now I had an EX series last week and we had some people thought that we're also doing today. Now, you're welcome to stay if you have an EX model or a model of that sort. You can do whatever you'd like. Uh, but we're going to be focusing mainly on the Easy Series, which anybody who has an Easy 1, Easy 2, Easy 3, Easy 4, Easy 10. I have to stop and think about that. For some reason, Lowry stopped. They didn't want number 5, 6, and 7, and 8, and 9. Um, and then... Uh, if you have a, a, the Discovery 3 or the Freedom 3 by Esty, we encourage those owners <coughs> to attend. So we're going to be main, Sean is going to mainly be focusing on those instruments today. We are recording this um, as well. A couple other tips, and I'm going to turn it over to Sean to do his usual tips uh, if you have not attended some of the weekly classes. But we used to have an option that would allow us to mute all or unmute all. Uh, we don't have that option anymore. We do have the option of muting all, and he will. we will say from time to time that you uh, will have the ability to unmute yourself. Now, what we do is we turn off that option, not because we don't want to hear what you have to say. It's because what we don't want to have happen is someone accidentally unmuting themselves and saying something that you don't want to be heard. And I will say, case in point, Friday, <laughs> it actually happened <laughs> where someone said the s word <laughs> and we cut it off real quick so but that's not the reason the reason is because we want to make sure that as we're doing the workshop someone does an accident and mute yourself and then inadvertently this you know creates a little audio friction between the two and and we don't catch what he has to say so with that said uh sean go ahead and give your upfront zoom tips and then i think then you should um uh play a little song before you teach your class is that okay yeah, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, <laughs> Thank you for doing that. Tips. I'm sure he. I'm sure he's going to do that. And we have a hand raised. Do you want to answer the hand raise, or you want to do your sure, thing first? Sure, sure. St that's Steve. I'm going to ask you to unmute there. If you want to say something, you can. Go ahead, Steve. Yeah, I'd like to thank you, Rome, uh, Robert, for sending me the email. I emailed you the other day from Apollo Beach, and I got it, and, and now I got hooked up with this this series, which I. Intend to watch all the time because I have an Good. easy. Good. Great. And great. now we expect to, have you to learn, and we're going to pop quiz you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. All right, Sean. So if you're, we do have some people that are a little bit newer. Steve, is this your first time on the Zoom workshop? He says no. No. Okay. So, but we have some people that are a little newer. I notice as the registrations were coming through. I recognize some names of people that have regularly attended, but Sean's going to give you a couple upfront Zoom tips. Um, so that way, throughout the workshop, we're going to try to create this experience as if we were in a store. So go ahead, Sean. All right. Uh, so just like any you know class we've done, you've probably seen a couple of these now. And if you haven't, here we go. Uh, you do have the option, just like uh, as if we were doing this in person and you're all sitting there in a crowd here. Uh, if you have a question throughout uh, my presentation here, you can raise your hand. Uh, there's a way to do that. It's on the middle of your screens. Uh, toward the center, it says Participants. And what you do is you click on that, and then it gives you the option, Raise Hand. Uh, I would. What I'm going to do, I'm going to, rather than stop every time I see a hand raised or if I see it going like this, uh, I'm going to stop maybe, I don't know, a few times throughout just to, answer any questions and then I'll answer several if you have them because uh, I'm basically going to start out on this easy one here uh, I'm going to cover what's on all of the easy series instruments it's going to be start out pretty basic just on how they work how they operate and kind of the idea behind them and why they were made and stuff like that 
And then, uh, yeah, in between, I'll be letting you know if, if you have any questions. Just uh, raise your hand or, you know, freak out like this, and maybe Robert will see you and unmute you there. I see I have one here, Cheryl Huffman. It won't let me uh, unmute you. You might have to join the audio, so it's not going to let me talk to you there. So um, look on the bottom if that's an issue as well. Look on the bottom left of your screen. And if you can't hear anything, there should be an option that says join audio because you have to click that for you to hear us and for us to hear you. And not only that, I guess if you want to, next to that, there's a button that says stop or start video. And that's if your video is not uh, on and you want us to see your pretty faces, you can start the video. And if it's on and you want it off, well, obviously you would want to do stop video. All right. So I'm going to get started here, and like I said, if you have any questions, just raise your hand throughout. I'll take a couple breaks throughout to answer anything you may have. Uh, but today we are going to be talking about the Easy Series. And if you have an SD, one of our new SD models, keep in mind we designed those instruments to be very much like these. So a lot of this, uh, in fact, most all of it will apply to you. And I'll let you know uh, what exactly does or doesn't. But we're going to start out on this easy one here. Uh, but before I do, I have a question for you. Uh, most people, you know, I, you have friends over. Well, maybe not right now. But you might have people over, and they'll say, what is that instrument you got there? And then what do you say? What kind of instrument do you say? You don't have to answer. It's rhetorical. But uh, you might say it's an organ. Some people say that, but there's more than just an organ sound in there, right? Or a keyboard, but it's more than just a keyboard. It's not a piano. Well, what is it? It is a virtual orchestra. Isn't that right, Robert? Absolutely. A virtual orchestra. So the, the idea behind that is you have a full orchestra right at your fingertips here. And what is your position in that orchestra? The answer to that is conductor. So if you have a pen or pencil, write that down. You are the conductor of a virtual orchestra. Uh, just like you might think of somebody like Frank Sinatra. I don't know if you guys know who that is, maybe. Maybe he's before your time. Uh, but Frank Sinatra was a very famous band leader. And what he would do is, you know, you don't see him at the front of the stage playing guitars or pianos or trumpets or saxophones. He is up at the front of the stage singing, right? So he hires an orchestra to back him up. So that's what your left hand is going to do. So I'm going to show you just simple. We'll play our first song here. Just how it works here. I'm going to play a standard by Frank Sinatra here. So I'm going to touch the button on the left side that says standards. Here we go. All right, so just like Frank Sinatra, you know, what he's doing with his left hand is conducting. So my left hand is telling my band what chords to play. And all I have to do is I can do it with one finger. Most of you know that. If I want a C chord, I tell my band C. If I want to tell them a different chord, I just change it throughout the song with my left hand. I'm simply conducting. And then what's my right hand doing? My right hand is singing. My right hand is doing his uh, vocal part. That's what's called the melody of the song. 
So that's very simple. Most of you know this type of stuff here. Uh, but what's great is what they did with these uh, easy series is they gave you a choice here too. You know, rather than a full band or full orchestra, you know, because any of these rhythm styles you touch, you've got things like country, Latin, you know, big band, or I think it's called standards on there. It looks like this. Let me see if I can get it up here. It looks just like this. Nope, that's the wrong one. Minimize those. There we go. Okay. So it looks just like that. And you see on the left side there, it says performer. Now say I don't want to play with that full band. I just want a pianist. I can do that too. Rather than hire a whole orchestra of people, when you touch that pianist button, it's basically like sending the whole band home and all I get is the piano player. The reason they do that, well, there are two reasons. The first reason is, well, when you turn on the radio, you don't always hear, you know, trumpets and saxophones and drums in every song. You might hear a pretty ballad with somebody singing and a piano, and that's it. So that's one. And then the other part is a lot of the time when somebody wants to learn to play music, what's the first instrument they think of? Oh, I want to learn the piano. Or you'll see on uh, other instruments as well, they have a guitarist feature, uh, which is the same thing, but we s just only hire a guitar player. So I'll show you what that sounds like here. And Robert, if you want to, you can spotlight the, vi the video of the easy one next to it if you can find it. You don't have to, but if you find it, you can. Um, but basically, if I want to play something like, let's say, a waltz, I'm going to touch the button that says 3-4 or waltz, and then I'm going to touch the pianist button on here. So hang on just a second. Let me walk in front of it here. So I'm going to touch 3-4, and then I'm going to touch pianist. And now I'm hiring a piano player to play a waltz with me. So let's give it an introduction. Hit that C chord. It's as easy as that. So when you're sitting at your instruments, and Robert, you could switch back to the regular one now. Uh, when you're sitting at your instruments, I want you to think about it in that way. Think about it as if you are a band leader or conductor, and you are leading your orchestra. You know, you already paid all these orchestras. All you have to do is hire them, and they got their money, right? You, most of you paid some money for these instruments here, I'm sure. Uh, so you hired all these bands, you might as well use them. You've got country bands, Latin bands. And then I'm going to switch over uh, to this one over here and say I want to use a guitarist. You can do that as well. So on this Easy 10 here, they, have, they start this on the Easy 2. So if you have an Easy 2, 3, 4, or 10, you can hire just the guitarist. So a, a good example of that, I'm just going to do, let's just do country music. You know, it's like when you go to a, you know, a, when you go camping, you know, you don't say, hey, bring the whole band, we're going camping. You know, one guy just brings a guitar, you know. So it's just like that. I can hire my guitar player. We can play some country music. Let me switch this here. And then away I go. Oops, wrong button. Hold on.
That was so a fancy the, ending. Yeah, so on the Easy Series, if you like the sound of a guitar, hire your guitarist. If you like the sound of a piano, hire a pianist. Or if you don't have either of those buttons on, what do you get? You get a full band. And that's what they use in the SD series. What we did is we went all full bands. So all of them you get, they're all going to be the full band sounds. Uh, but you still have a lot of those options, a lot of those rhythms. So next I'm going to talk about a feature. Well actually, I'm going to see if you guys have any questions on anything I've talked about so far. I've kept it pretty simple. We're going to get more complicated as we go along. But if anybody has a question, feel free and raise the hand. I will answer Looks those like right now. Yeah, I'll see if I can do your part. Barbara, I've got you here. It should say to unmute on your screen. Barbara Bradfield, do you have a question? It might pop up on your screen to unmute yourself if you haven't already. Hi. Oh, wait, we got okay. a lot to unmute. There we go. Okay, uh, well, it was an easy one. You, mm -hmm. you, you went over to the easy 10. Um, you could add the guitar also, couldn't you, by just the sound? Um, if I go to country, it's going to set it up for me. But then if I go to my sounds, so I think we have two uh, guitars on that. Wouldn't I just yeah. add that? Or I don't even know if I have to add that because it probably is going to have this. Yeah, that's an excellent question. What I'm, what I'm doing is on the left side of the instrument so far. Okay. This is, I'm talking about the accompaniment or your okay. left hand uh, orchestra. Right. And there is a button on some of them. It's not on the easy one, but some of the other ones that say guitarist. Just like yours okay. says pianist, like in that picture, yes. there's yeah. another one that says guitarist. And not only does it add a guitar on the right side, it actually turns your left hand into just a guitar player strumming as well. Okay. When so it sets up both. in the easy one, you set a uh, country. What is the setup there? Is, isn't that a guitar or no? It's just a full band, everything. A full band? And you have a pianist uh, country. As I know well. that, but I'm saying if we, we did that song and I put it on country, what is the left hand? What's what is that going to be the the setup that they'd make it as? Isn't that a guitar, or no? On the left hand, it gives you a full country band. I think okay. I, I don't know if you might be talking about the right hand. Does it give you a guitar on the right hand? Well, it does. Yes, I yeah. know that on the right hand, the right mm -hmm. side, because you just push. That's your sound. Yeah. You can get a guitar in that way. Correct. Okay. But the left hand, it gives you, right when you touch country, it gives you a full band. It sounds like this. Okay. You've probably heard it here. Okay, I got it, yeah. Okay. Versus the other one was just a guitar. Correct. So the okay. other one I had, I pressed the guitar button, and I get... Okay. Yep. So it's more guitar themed. And you can I do see. that with any type of uh, rhythm that you use. So just like on yours where it says pianist, you can hire a piano player to play Latin, to play country with you. Um, all those rhythms that you have, you can hire just a piano player if you want. Um, right. Some of the other instruments like easy two or three or four, you can change that to a guitarist as well. So that's what I was okay. talking about. So how do I get rid of my hand? Are you going to do that? <laughs> yeah, I can do that for you. Thank you. <laughs> All right, do we have any other questions? I don't see any other hands raised, so I think I'm going to move on. So I'm going to move on with a feature that makes things very easy because you have a couple different options. I'm talking about the left hand so far. Your options, uh, when you want to play a song, you put the music up in front of you and you say, oh, I want to play this song. Then you think, okay, what type of music is this? And you look through your buttons here, okay, Latin or country, you know, if it's a Hank Williams song, what button do you think is going to work? Country, you know, same with uh, An Carlos and no Antonio Carlos Jobim. He's a Latin artist, right? So you would press the Latin button, you know, so most of the time it can be pretty easy to try to figure out what rhythm to use. But then you have some exceptions, like what if you wanted to play a song like uh, the Alley Cat song? I think we did a lesson on that at one point. Uh, what type of music would you call that? Well, gosh, I don't know. I don't know what type of music that is. So when I'm looking at the buttons, I might think, well, I don't know which one to press. So what Lowry did on their instruments, and this is also on the uh, SD, uh, Freedom 3, uh, 
they added a button called Song Setup. Okay. So we're going to talk about this button for a second because it's important. Now this is actually like taking your orchestra that you're hiring and if you don't know what orchestra to hire, this is now you're calling your agent, okay? You are calling your agent to say, hey, hire a band for me. I want to play this song. You figure it out. You hire the band for me. So when I use song setup, all I have to do is touch the button that says song setup and then it gives you a list alphabetically of every song that's in there and it's got a gosh darn lot of songs in here uh, so alley cat starts with the letter a yeah i could s read your read some of your lips saying that yeah that's great uh, so all i do is i highlight alley cat song hit select and what do you know it did all the work for me so check this out it put a sound on the right hand on the top and the bottom keyboard if you have that and gave me a good rhythm to use with the tempo set everything's done for you all you have to do is put the music up and play your song Wow, it even hired a cat. You don't have to pay for those cats, though. You know, they're just cats. But they hired them anyway. So what they did is they put a honky-tonk piano on the top, a kitten on the bottom keyboard here, and then a ragtime piano uh, rhythm on my left hand. So that was my orchestra. It was called Ragtime Piano. So what you can do... Uh, in addition to just picking out your song setup for a specific song, and this is where it gets kind of fun, sometimes when you go to a certain songs in here, like I'm going to look at what's in here, the, the very next song on this song setup is called Aloha Oi. Some of you may recognize that. And I already know that, okay, if I click that, it's probably going to give me something that sounds really nice. And what, what type of style? Hawaiian, yeah. So when I touch that rhythm here, I get a fantastic Hawaiian rhythm filled with birds and, and one lovely sounds. But what's great here is it doesn't know what I'm going to play. So I can sneakily play a different song, if that makes sense. So if I know I like that setup for Aloha Oi, you can play other songs as well. One of my favorites, I like to go to Blue Hawaii and do something like uh, Can't Help Falling in Love. those birds in there. Robert likes to say they're poopless birds, so you don't have to clean up after them or anything. Uh, but what's great here is uh, you, <laughs> you heard a couple other things that I did in there. Uh, on a lot of these instruments, you have some other features you can use as well, not only for the left hand, 
But for the right hand, did you hear that uh, slide guitar? There was a slide guitar in there. Some of you may know about this. You all have a switch. If you have a foot pedal on your instrument, if you have one of those what's called expression pedals, you have a little switch on the left side of it. So if I kick my right foot to the left, I hit a switch, and it's called glide. So what it's going to do is it's going to take that I whatever instrument I have, and it's going and it's going to glide it up. So when I kick it in and let go, now you can't see what my foot's doing. All I'm doing is kicking over to the left and hitting it. The hard part with some people is that volume pedal. Sometimes when they kick to the left, you accidentally floor it and make it nice and loud. But really, all you have to do is put your foot on that expression pedal, lift up slightly so your foot's not pressing down. Just lift it up slightly and just kick gently to the left, just gently. You don't have to smash it or anything like that. So that's how you can get that glide sound. And now I used another feature in there as well that I want to talk about. And I'm going to go back to the easy one for this because uh, you have this button as well. It's a button called Fill. Okay, not like the name Fill. It's uh, F-I-L-L. -L. And what it's going to do is it's going to take your drummer and your band and fill in. It's filling in space in the music. So a lot of the time you'll hear this when, you know, let's use the big band or standards example. If, you know, say Frank Sinatra's not singing anymore, he stops for a second. And then the band fills in, and then maybe they go into the big part of the song, the chorus. you know, Or maybe you'll hear the drummer take a solo, and you can do that on these. So if I go to, let's use that standards example again, because that's a good one here. So I'm going to touch the button that says standards. There we go, so you can see it a little better. And all I do is there's a button right on it, right here. My finger's pointing to it. It says fill. And all you have to do is you can touch it once. You can hold it down if you want to. And they'll, they'll do a little fill-in for you. So when I'm playing with my band, they're doing their thing. If I touch fill, they do a nice little fill-in of space. They'll play something in between so you don't get lost. So what I like to do is in between parts of the song, whenever my hand, my whenever my right hand is not playing a melody and I have some time, I'll reach up, touch the fill button, and it just gives you a nice little flourish of uh, drums and sounds. Uh, what's also fun is when you're playing, some of these fill-ins give you some special features like this one instead of just doing a little bit of a fill-in of space the drummer if you hold it down will go into a whole drum solo I like to use this whenever I get lost in a song I kinda use it to save me and I pretend I meant to do this. So I have the drummer do a drum solo. I start counting, and then I come right back in. So that is how you use the fill button. Uh, do I have any questions so far? We've talked about your fill button. We've talked about your glide switch. We've talked about your left hand and hiring an orchestra. We have a I question. Yep, yes, it looks and like it says Kingfish, but I think that's, is it? It's Arlene. Arlene, Arlene. I remember now, yes. Yes. 
Yeah, I have a question on the easy one. There is no song set up, but there's a style set up. Correct? Yes, correct. Okay. That's what Should I'm that talk button about next, actually? That's perfect. <laughs> oh, okay. Should that button be on every time you select um, you know, an orchestra? Uh, generally, yes. It just depends on how much work you want to do. What style setup does is it actually gives you a perfect sound on the right hand to match the orchestra you select. So, for example, when I selected that standards band, what instrument did it give me? It gave you the big band. It gave me a trombone on the right oh, hand. Oh, trombone, yeah, It gave right. me a big band with a trombone doing the lead instrument. So I have Tommy Dorsey. Can you Dorsey. show another example, Sean? Just real quick, put it the yeah, country. Yeah, yeah. Just like if I go to Latin, for example, it's not going to give me a trombone. It's not going to give me a country guitar. It's going to give me vibes. So... That's what the style setup button does. The style setup button is generally on automatically. Let me see if I have a, might have a picture of that. I don't think I do at the moment here. But <coughs> when it's on, it just sets it up for you. And generally, it's okay. like I said, always on. So it'll set it up your right hand automatically to sound good. And it does that on all of them. The Estes, if you have an SD. It will do it. It's called Auto Setup. It's the same exact button. They just changed the name from Style Setup to Auto Setup. You know, and it does exactly what it says. It sets up pending your style. So, like I said, if you do... So that should be on all the time. Yeah. Um, you can turn yeah. it off if you want to choose for yourself what instrument to play. Like, maybe you want to play a, you know, a country song with a, a kazoo and you don't want it to do that guitar, you know. You can <laughs> select something different, but I would leave it on just as a yeah, okay. And, and if I may step in just for a second, the Thank style you. setup or auto setup on the Estes does a couple other things too. It generally sets up what's considered an ideal tempo for that style of music. It also sets up the balance of the instrument. So, what Sean said is when he put on the standards, trombone came on. Well, not only did trombone come on, but the band that you heard, the, it's programmed that the volumes of that band is in sync so that you can hear the melody. So sometimes it does a little bit more than just selecting a right-hand sound. Uh, sometimes it, it does the balance as well. If you have it off, it's basically... Anything you push, like if you have it off and you go from big standards to country to the sound that you have chosen is going to be the same all the time. Now, I had a question, uh, Sean. Someone asked about what's the difference between song setup and song. That's a good question. Uh, what the song? Because you mentioned song does. setup. Song yeah. setup has got how many in the easies or the uh, in the freedom? Are you trying well, to quiz got, me? Uh, uh, I don't know the got numbers. Got a hundred. Hundred? You were thinking a hundred. You look like you were gonna say a hundred. I was. I was. I was. Yeah. Yeah. The, you, you have a hundred different songs built in there, and the most common songs, and especially for our students, they're the most common songs. So you're not gonna get stuck with a bunch of, uh, you know, Taylor Swift songs or something. It's gonna be classics. You know, you'll have Frank Sinatra tunes. You'll have Tennessee waltz, things like that built into there, um, <coughs> or show tunes. You know, some of the good stuff. Uh, but speaking of uh, style setup, I kind of want to go into that for a minute, and we'll kind of do that with the next segment here. Um, what the style setup button does, this is great. This is if you have, uh, we have a lot of people in here with an easy 10. Now, what that does, let me show you what it looks like here. looks like this. You see that style setup button, but then next, of it, next to it, you see five more buttons that are just numbered. They say setups, one, two, three, four, five. Now, this is one of my favorite features on any instrument uh, because it takes the work out of it. So on a lot of the easy series instruments, well, all of them, you have on the right side of your instrument, you have all these sound choices. You know, you'll see buttons, and they're, they're icon-based. What I mean by that 
is th you see shapes of instruments. So if you're looking at your instrument at home, next to that pianos button on the right side, you have a picture of what? A piano. W for guitars, you have a picture of a guitar. So it makes it easy to see what type of instrument you're choosing. However, a lot of the time people get caught up in if you want a certain type of guitar, you have to touch the button, scroll to it. What these setups here do, setups one through five, is they give you five more choices of sounds for that particular style that you chose. So, as an example here, I'm just going to press one of these rhythms in here. I'm going to go to, this one's really fun, I'm going to do Broadway. We did a class on that, uh, one of our first classes, you may have seen it. We, we did a Broadway medley. And I'm going to play some stuff like that here. But what makes it so interesting, and when you guys hear a concert, or when you hear somebody play, what makes it compelling and what makes it exciting is you hear the sounds change. You hear different uh, variations of sounds. Sometimes you, you don't hear a whole concert of maybe a, uh, you know, an oboe. You don't hear an entire co oboe concert. You see a symphony where they have an oboe solo, they'll have a you know, violin part, they'll have a cello part, you know. And that's what I can do with these buttons. So when you're conducting your orchestra, what you're doing by pressing these five buttons is you're bringing out those members. So you're just, you know, when you see a symphony or somebody play and they stand up to play their solo, this is what you're doing. So when you play that melody, you're bringing out that member of the band. And what the style setup here is going to do, it's going to make that band member suit your style. So, for example, just like when we talked about country music, it gave me a country sound automatically for my right hand. When I touch these five buttons, it's just going to give me more country sounds or more Broadway sounds. Let's play some Broadway music. And I'm going to go between these five buttons and show you kind of what you guys can do at home if you have this. I forgot to switch to this instrument. I've got a switch going, so it has to go one at a time here. Here we go. that fun so you can change your sound whenever you want to throughout the uh, throughout your song or songs and then it just gives you another sound to go with that type of rhythm so for example let's do another one let's play a ballad so a nice pretty song and this is going to introduce a new feature that they put on these easy series instruments what's great about some of these uh, rhythms in here 
is not only do you get that rhythm, so for example, gospel, you get gospel, it's just gospel. When I press ballad, not only do I get a ballad, I get what's called a signature style. Does anybody know what that is? Raise your hand if you do. Okay, I see a couple. And what that is, is you get a signature style based on an original arrangement. So if you want to write that down, you can. A signature style is a style of music based on an original arrangement. So when I touch this ballad button, it gives me a rhythm called Wonderful World. And I can uh, let you take a guess at what song that might go well with. There's a song uh, by Louis Armstrong called What a Wonderful World. And right when I start the introduction, you'll hear it right away. It's made to play that song. Can you play other songs with it? Of course. But it's going to sound great with that one. So let's do that. And I'm going to change the sounds again throughout it with my style setup buttons. Big round of applause, everybody. Give it up. Yeah, so what's great is not only am I playing with, <coughs> you know, just a general ballad, I get to play with one of my favorite artists of all time, Louis Armstrong. Uh, I grew up, I, I played trumpet when I was a kid, so I looked up to that guy. So what's really cool is I can hire his original orchestra to play with me. You know, and as you go up, you'll find different uh, signature styles and different instruments that they made. Uh, that are extremely fun to play with because you can play with that original band. And what's nice is it sounded perfect to play that song. I mean, I, I might have flubbed a little bit, but it sounds perfect to play with Louis Armstrong's band. If I want to play different songs, I can do that too. It might sound great uh, with different sounds. If I want to play like a slide guitar, I could do something like this song. know the name of that song you get points if you do let's see you get a virtual candy lollipop you can unmute yourself you can chat you can raise yeah, your or hand. if you have any questions as well because you can do a lot with what I've been talking about nobody knows the name of the song anyone I, mean, I, I mean see I do lips moving Nancy you have to unmute oh, she's yourself. Saying it, I, see. I think I know what it is, but I want to make sure. Unmute yourself. 
sleepwalk. Yes, yeah. you get a virtual lollipop. <laughs> Thank you. You don't gain any calories with it. That's the kind I like. <laughs> All right. Any questions? We got a hand Susan. raised by Susan Lamastro. I asked you to unmute, so I'm, let's. Oh, oh, sorry. Do it again. <laughs> oh, this is so fun. Sometimes I accidentally muted you as you were. Go ahead and unmute yourself, Susan. Oh, sorry. I keep doing it. I keep trying to ask, and then I. Shut it off. One more time, Susan. Me. There yeah. we go. Question is, I'm not sure, but I heard the answer. The difference between on an easy four and the others, the difference between song setup and song. When would you use song? Song? Oh, what song will do is that doesn't play, or that what songs does is it's different than uh, song setup. I meant to go over that. I totally forgot. <laughs> uh, but what the songs button does is it plays the entire song for you. So you don't even have to play it. So what it's doing is it's, it's kind of like a t having a teacher in your house where okay. it'll play the song for you as an example. You can listen to it um, on some instruments. You can play along with it um, and actually learn the song that way. But what it does is it puts the songs, some of the songs that we've, typically teach in lessons like our lesson okay course. yeah it just has makes built. sense yeah i thought maybe there was another secret but there isn't <laughs> no i mean yeah. some of them you can use the songs button instead of song setup but you have to do an extra step so for example if i want to play a song like uh oh wait i'm in the wrong button here if i want to play house of the rising sun that's not in your song setup, but it is in one of the lesson books, so it's in your songs list. But what it's going to do automatically is right when I hit select, it's going to play for me. So you see, it's, uh, it's playing the melody for me. I don't have to do anything. But what's cool is after I stop it just now, I could put the intro back on, and now it's set up for me to play. So it won't play it again. All I have to do is ac actually play the chords. I see thumbs up. That must have answered that. So now I can play it with my right hand. Does so that if you have song setup, Sean, mm -hmm. you have the 100 song setups. And if you have the song feature, you also have the songs, but it's kind of an also another way of working around the song setup. So it's almost like adding, how many songs yeah. are in the easy 10? Oh, thanks. Uh, 40, I think? 40, good guess. Yeah. Yes. So that means you technically have 100 song setups and 40 songs. Uh, and if you have that instrument, it's like having 140 song setups in a way, too, depending on how you use it. If you have the Easy 4, I think that has 30 songs built into it mm -hmm. and the song setup, so that would be 130. I'd have to, you'd have to double check. Yeah. On the Easy 2 and the Easy 1s, you have just the songs feature that play the songs, but you can kind of use those as the song setup as a little bit of a workaround. On the Freedom 3, now there is a little bit of difference, Sean. You mentioned playing along with it or, you know, as an educational tool. Uh -huh. um, so there's a couple of different things you can do with the song feature as a learning tool. Because I don't know if you caught what he said, but he said a lot of them were, those songs that were recorded were at once upon a time the beginning songs that we taught in our classes. So there is a significance to those. So there's a couple of different ways depending on the model. And when I say depending on the model, there's like three different ways you can use this depending on your instrument. So on the easy one and the easy two, um, and, and, and maybe the easy three, Sean, correct, stop me and correct me if I'm wrong on any of this. When you play the song, it'll play the song like you said. Mm-hmm. If you want to play along with it, 
you're playing the melody along with it. Is that correct? Correct. If All right. Like so to, do yeah. a quick, quick example of that, and we'll show us on all on three of these. I'll st I'll even spotlight your video for you. I already got it. I think. Oh, you did it, boy! You're fast. These kids. Is it showing the easy one there? No, it's showing me, but that's okay. I'm beautiful did today. I press something wrong. Let me try that again. Uh, I think I lost the video or something. There it is. Okay. It might be a little laggy here, but that's okay. All right. So just as an example, I'm going to turn on the songs button and go to a song that I know. Let's do Love Me Tender. So I'm just going to highlight the song in there and press the start button. And now it's going to play for me. play along if I want to. So you see here, I actually played along with it, but you don't have to. Um, does that answer your question, Robert? Yeah, so basically, if you notice what he did, is, is it plays the song, and when you start playing the notes with it, it's playing the melody, and you're playing, you're both playing the melody. So mm -hmm. you can kind of use that. Now, on the easy four and the easy ten, you can do the same. However, um, another option is, um, if, go ahead and get a song set up. Uh, on the easy uh, 10 there and something simple and what will happen is because the person that recorded it's playing one keyboard or the other so if you know for example that uh, Bill Curry by the way is the person who programmed all of these instruments including our new Estes when he recorded those songs he may start playing the melody on one keyboard so what will happen is if you want instead of playing along with it on the same keyboard switch to the other keyboard so uh, as an example, what do you have there? Uh, well, I'm just going to do a simple one, an Amazing yeah. Grace. You've probably heard that song. But what's nice is on the top keyboard, I think it's automatically going to play my melody for me. So I'm just going to select the song, and it'll start. That's on the top keyboard he plays, correct? You think? I believe so. along with it on the bottom keyboard if I want. Good. So we'll as he was playing, it sounded like he was playing the organ on the top keyboard? Yeah, it was automatically playing the organ on the top keyboard and then on the bottom keyboard. I can come in with a piano and play along with it, either to practice or just for fun. I can play in between, you know, the regular parts. Right. Now, on the SD Freedom 3, it's a little different, isn't it? I know it there's an SD on there. So, on the SD Freedom 3, you also have the song button, and it does the same as what we're saying. It'll play the songs. So, I got When the Saints Go Marching in here. Okay, so it's playing the song, but what what the how it was programmed here is that once the song is playing, and you try to play the notes, watch what happens. And let me start it again. Oops. 
pushed the wrong one. Let me go back to the, there we go. Uh-oh, it's not letting you play. So if you notice, boy, I was, it, that's a great feature when the song's playing, because if you ever have anybody over, or you maybe you're doing a Zoom, you could really fool them and just kind of play and move your hands around and hit all the wrong notes. Nothing will happen. What happens is it'll, it prevents you from playing the melody. There is a button that says melody off, however. Um, and so for the SD Freedom 3s, this all ties into the song feature. If you push the melody off, it'll stop playing the melody and allow you to play the melody in its place. Everything else will still work like the other functions. So here again, you got to have to hear the same intro a few times. Now I'll turn it off after a few notes. You notice no melody. So I would have my music but I have to play the melody. Oh, but it's doing the left hand for you still. But it's still doing the left hand. But listen very closely because the band I think is gonna change. You notice the band changed. Now I'm done playing, oh, wow. I'm tired and turn the melody button off and it goes back. So they all work the same but slightly different in the way you use it depending on your instrument. So I just want to make sure you all were very uh, were clear on that. Yeah, what's great about all these instruments is they they do a great job at actually, you know, if you move up instruments things like that, it actually makes it easier rather than harder. That's the whole point of it too is they make it easy. Because, you know, they take whatever you say as an example, like, oh, make it easier to change sounds? Well, sure, let's do that. You know, so they make it easier to change sounds. They make it easier to choose rhythms. Uh, you get features like that in the song. So a lot of good helpful stuff. I think that's all I've got for the most part. Ran probably longer Actually, than I wanted have to. I have some more ideas, but I can get to them in a yeah, future. Yeah, you have a lot more to say, I'm sure. But oh, yeah, we'll have more. You wouldn't be able to have a class next month. Yeah, I could do that. We got to keep you coming back for more. <laughs> but see, you have a question. I do. You were talking about playing the keyboard, oh, setting up on song setup, switching keyboards. Now, if you want to play an accompaniment on the bottom keyboard, do you set it up separately from what's yes. playing on the top? What instrument do you have? She has, you have uh, a Regency, right, Nancy? I have a Regency and an and a easy one, but yes. I'm talking about primarily the Regency. So it's going to be a slightly little different that because the Regency on the bottom keyboard does not have that split keyboard. Yeah, it just has your left hand sound on the, uh, on the Regency. So the left, the bottom keyboard on a Regency the bottom keyboard is basically for your left hand only, and the top keyboard is for your right hand. Okay, so, so I can't split, So when you play it at the bottom, it won't play a sound. Go ahead. Okay, okay, that's what yeah, I wanted you, to know. Yeah, if you play the song Thank feature you. and try to play on the bottom right keyboard, your chords are going to change over and over, and you're going to think you're really not playing well. In <laughs> fact, you'll be playing the correct notes. But it will. But I wouldn't be playing well. <laughs> yeah. Well, you might, but what I'm saying is it'll interpret it differently. Now you have the also the easy one. One, okay. So the easy one. How many of you, when you look at it, if you go put the spotlight on the easy one there, Sean. Okay. So what you're looking at there, that's not a one keyboard instrument. It looks like one, doesn't it? Now you're all, I see some funny looks. I have some people looking at me going, this guy has lost his marbles because it looks like one keyboard. Well, it is not. It's a one keyboard split into two. It's really a two keyboard instrument. One for your left hand, one for your right hand. Now, on it the can't. On the screen there, you see that where it splits? Yeah, yeah now, okay. 
theoretically you can not theory actually you can turn this into just a piano one keyboard but that's not how these are designed for it's designed for hobby players they put their left hand in one place and right hand in the other so it's really split into two um, over the years the instruments as the way they were designed was when you got into a two keyboard instrument your two keyboard was now your left hand was on the lower and your right hand was on the upper like the Regency okay. and then as they progress over the years Lowry um, on the smaller models they used to do this all the time on the expensive ones a long time ago but as Lowry started introduced recent models of the easies and what have you what they did is they they gave you the best of both worlds is they had the split keyboard on the bottom and the upper but naturally when you have a two keyboard instrument where do you usually place your hand when you first start left hand on the lower right hand in the upper even those who have the easy tens and the fours it's almost natural that we put our hand like that and so that's kind of an option so just kind of keep that in mind that on the regency if you use the song feature uh, or the does it have the song set up? I believe yes. it does, right? Yeah. It's got like uh, yep. 50 song setups. Did you know that? I think so, yes. You did know that. You have about 60 people watching you, so you got to just say yes and act like you really oh, know. Okay. That. <laughs> yes. So there are 50, uh, so, and, and you can use that. And then the song feature just plays the, I think, 20 or whatever, 30 or whatever songs are in there. And again, don't try to play that lower keyboard because you're going to be basically playing chords the whole time. We have a question from Renee. I'm yep, going to. I've already got her unmuted. So okay. Is it Rennie or Renee? Renee. Renee. Yes. It's all yours. I... You're spotlighted. <laughs> I don't really have a question. I just wanted to thank you for doing these um, classes because I'm sitting in the middle of a truck stop in my motor home in the middle of New Mexico and oh, wow. I can still um, attend these classes so hey, thank that's you great. that's great I'm glad to hear that yeah it's something we've always I think wanted to do but never quite got around to it because this is what's great too is it's good for if you're a snowbird or if you know any in our classes now they can take classes anytime if you're in Iowa you know you can come on here and enjoy some classes and, and then, some of you know may know this but we actually have a student that I, I think there's more than one but it's some from Canada and there's actually one that attends regularly from uh, the UK, UK yeah. and, and he and says it's can... pretty it's pretty crazy over there and he doesn't know when he can get back to vi visit six months and so when we do it it's like evening time his time yeah so more and more we can start doing uh, as well as as most of you know, the stores are kind of opening up now, so you can actually uh, come in one on one if it's something you're comfortable with. Uh, you can come in. We're doing one on ones at most stores, so uh, you can call or or contact Robert and make sure your store is one of those ones. Um, but you can come in one on one basis and actually learn a lot of the stuff we're talking about one on one. Or we could even do this one on one and do a one on one Zoom, Zoom on one. So I think that's about all I've got for this class. Any Anything from you, Robert, announcements? Yeah, so uh, just a couple quick short announcements. Uh, first of all, thank you for all attending. Uh, when we do these, our goal is, is we have one goal in mind first, is that everyone will have some take-home value. It gets a little tricky when you have, as you know, we have just in the Easy Series, I was thinking about this earlier, it's like, we're fo we're focusing on the and it was like wait a second easy one easy two easy three easy four easy <laughs> there's a lot of easies and then there's SD discovery three free of three and even though they all have a lot of similarities some instruments have some things that are slightly different and we're, we may talk about something that doesn't pertain exactly to your instrument what what we our goal is that you go least leave with at least one thing that you can take home immediately sometimes two or three or more um, and so uh, as we progress this week for example uh, every week we're doing what's called I started just calling uh, a virtual variety class um, and and that gets even trickier because that one is anybody who has a organ from us can attend now that means easy one easy two three four five ten journey fanfare old Lowry new Lowry <laughs> everything in between and we really try to 
do the same uh, in those classes. We try to talk about something that everyone can take home and apply to their instruments right away. So if you're on those classes and we start talking about something that doesn't pertain to yours right away, don't go away because eventually we get back to saying, now if you have an instrument like this, here's the alternative and so forth. And we just try real hard to, to accommodate. And we were switching up some of the key educators in those. Like this week we have uh, Joni Monero and Brian Lewis will be teaching that. Some of you know those um, instructors out there. Next week we're going to have Joe Fontesha and he's going to do uh, his version of Tricks of the Trade in, in, an, in an hour class. And he said that it's designed for all model types. And we have a lot of other great instructors out there. Uh, some of you may or may not have met uh, Myra Bald, for example, in our Port Charlotte. We have uh, Jason. We have all sorts of great instructors out there that op eventually, as we get set up in all of our stores and locations, we can just patch into that store and say, okay, Jason, you teach the class this week and teach something different, and you teach something, and you know, uh, and so it's it just that just keep that in mind that we're that's the weekly classes, and then monthly we're going to continue doing these workshops. Um, I'm also working my next step. Um, bear with me. I'm learning a whole new skill. Uh, my next step is to get with the person that is in control of our website to see if we can put these up on the website and the dates so you know in advance. Uh, bear with me, but that's my next goal. Um, I have a little something, uh, a little, I'm not, I don't want to call it homework, an assignment. And if you do this assignment, we'll give you um, two free song sheets of easy play music. And it's a really easy assignment. Sometime between now and whenever you can get around to it, but sooner the better because I'm going to give this, the songs to the PAs and I'm going to tell them that these two songs, if your student contacts you and tells them what you've learned today, that you can give them this. And you have to do this pretty soon because what will happen is it will fall further down on their email and they'll forget. So if you get with your PA, with the closest local store, and if you're not sure who your PA is, contact me and I'll make sure you have a PA. Because even if you're in Palm Coast, in a location we uh, don't have open anymore, mm -hmm. we have PAs throughout our company that it consist from afar. Uh, Sean was just helping a student from Palm Coast last week. Yep. And that's thousands of miles away. Um, so here's your assignment. Get s either schedule or contact your personal assistant and just tell them the things you learned today, or if you have questions about what you learned today, there may be something still not, just just touch base with them, and by doing that, they'll have two pieces of easy play music for you that we'll send to you free of charge, and that's my, and if you don't want to wow. do that, that's fine, but I just <laughs> thought it'd be kind of fun um, to get touch with your PAs because not everybody can get on uh, as far as our uh, PAs because they're working with students in the store right now what have you and I'm going to send them the two songs and I'm going to tell them that if your PA calls you here's why because <laughs> I'm sure some of them are not going to they're going to say what but anyway they'll have the two songs and they'll be able to forward them to you uh, in an email and um, last but not least I want to echo what Sean said and that is um, uh, that get if you want to go into the store for a one-on-one, that's fine. Uh, and if not, if it's not convenient, um, all the staff members are setting up their little free accounts and stuff like that. You can do a one-on-one with a student uh, in your PA. And I know Sean and Joe Thompson over in Mesa did that last week with one of the students, and it was very helpful. So. That's all I have for you today. Uh, stay tuned in for all the exciting things. We have a great uh, class this week coming up Wednesday and Thursday. If you're not enrolled, email me, and I'll make sure you're on that list. Not everybody gets that link, only the people that register. And then on Friday, we have a special guest performer for our weekly Friday, uh, and that is going to be Mr. Joe Fontesha. Uh, we call him Mr. Hats because he does a lot of funny hat things, the stories that go with his music. Don't miss out. And uh, and that's what we have for you today. And, of course, as always, spread the word. Spread the word. 
and tell as many students as possible, if someone or friends as possible, if they don't have an instrument, your Easy One, your Discovery Three, those basic big beginners models are a great way to start the hobby, and they're very economical in price, and they include all these lessons that they can learn. Uh, if you have a friend, tell them they should learn and put us in, or get with your PA and have us reach out to them. If you don't have a friend, make one. <laughs> And then tell them, you should join our classes. <laughs> so with that said, um, uh, I'm going to have, before we end, uh, Sean, I think you should play another song on the way out. Uh, oh, but boy. before you do, we have a couple hands raised. Jeannie Marie. Jeannie? Yes, I just want to make this clear. You said contact our PA with either questions or what we learned. Um, That's it. That, that had to be by phone or can we email them? We want you to speak to them. Personally. Yes. We gotta make you work for it. So I, okay, no email, okay. <laughs> Thank you. You either speak to them, talk to them. We want you to connect with them. The, okay. And it's uh and and uh if you go into the store, then wear a mask. Okay. And Nancy, you have a hand raised? I do now. Is Jason my PA? Call Jason right okay. away and okay, bug him and say be. here's what i learned give me my music stay Thank in touch you. stay in touch with the, the boys over there and gal be. sorry joni's there too all right any other questions all right all right all so i think we'll finish off today with a song a farewell song i don't know all if right. it'll be a farewell song but a song to say goodbye until next time all right i almost Let's want do. you to uh do happy trails, but no, it's okay. <laughs> well, I'll do something to get you guys energized for the rest of the day here. Let's do something called the Beer Barrel Polka. I'm going to give you the option to unmute yourself, unmute yourself, and then give a big round of applause. Let's hear some people applauding and hooting and hollering. Thank you, everyone. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. The crowd goes Roll out wild. the barrel. And the crowd <laughs> goes on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, we thank you for all att attending today. We hope it made your day. We hope you learned something. Oh, it we'll did. Have another one next month. And if you want to jot this down, I tentatively have it scheduled for, let me take a look at my calendar, July 13. But stay tuned and we'll make sure you get the emails. But I'm tentatively got it scheduled for July 13. So having said that, <laughs> Thank you so much, and have a wonderful, joyous, and blessed, and stay safe, and play music, everybody. Keep playing. Thank okay. you so much. And Thank you. Bye-bye, everyone. Later. Bye. Got a Spanish class. Mm -hmm. <laughs>